the left, Chris Van Meter. On the right, Ben Friedman. Wow, okay. It has been a long weekend of magic. So far, we have done 42 rounds of magic. This is the 42nd round. Only one more round to go. He did the math. He's Adrian <laughs> Sullivan. I cannot believe that number. I feel like I've been here for 152 rounds. But uh, I'll take your word for it, Adrian. <laughs> 16 rounds of the Invitational, three rounds um, of the top eight, et cetera, et cetera, oh, et cetera. Wow. Et cetera. Oh, so much magic, so much great magic, and still yet to come crowning a Legacy Open champion here. There's a lot of prestige to this Legacy Open at the Invitational weekends because there are so many great players now, who play yep. in this. Yeah, like I said, this is the 43rd round. One more round will make it 44. Can you believe it? <laughs> nope, I, I, I still can't believe it. You keep saying these numbers uh, to me, and I have zero belief. Disbelieve. Now, Chris Van Meter, uh, apparently he's got a little bit of a... This is some banter that was said between some of the players earlier this tournament. They said that he had uh, told them he wouldn't shave his beard until he'd won a tournament, so they said they were expecting him to look like Grizzly Adams. Well, I think he's going to try to show him wrong, win this one, get a chance to shave that beard. I thought you were going to go somewhere different with that because Reed Duke playing Bant, <laughs> Banter. What if Reed Duke tried to grow a beard? What would that look like? <laughs> Maybe if he, if Reed Duke wins this tournament, we can get our fantastic staff photographer, Rob Johnson, to Photoshop Chris Van Meter's beard onto Reed Duke. Oh. That would be amazing. I don't know. I, I think I, you know, like many people, I like Reed Duke just the way he is. Uh. These players uh, come into this at third and seventh seed. That means Chris Van Meter gets the first choice. He's going to be playing. He keeps his hand. Ben Friedman. What's going to happen I here? I think Chris is still deciding whether he's going to keep. No, he's okay. They both keep. Great. Yep. Ponder is the first play of the game. Okay, so Chris Van Meter, sneak and show, looking to combine a sneak effect, either sneak attack or show and tell with an attack effect, Gristle Brand or Emrakul, the Aeons Torn. That is the key to victory for this combo deck. Cheating out two of the grizzliest of creatures in Magic's history. And on the other side, Ben Friedman's game plan is to disrupt that with counter spells while playing cheap creatures that can get on the attack. And there's one of them, Delver of Secrets, just a 1-1, but it can transform into Insectile Aberration, a 3-2 flyer. And that Delver of Secrets looks to be altered in some kind of fashion with someone's face. I think it might be a kind of a Clark Kent figure. I'm not sure. We'll have to find out. Gutaxian Probe shows us lots of cards. Days, another Delver, a Grim Lava Mancer, a Swords to Plowshares, a Brainstorm, and a Spell Pierce. And I think you are absolutely right. That was Clark Kent, Delver Secrets. So when that flips, I'm expecting Superman. So now I'm really excited to watch that card flip. Now one of the things, the uh, turn one Delver from this blue, white, red Delver Blade really changes the way that this deck feels. It actually feels like a true aggro control deck. It has a real clock. But if it doesn't get that kind of draw, it can slow play it out a little bit and go for that Stoneforge Mystic side, giving it that blade feel. Here we go. Lotus Petal Fetch Land from Chris Van Meter. Is Chris Van Meter just going to... Uh, try to power something out right now. He knows the days is in Ben's hand. Does he have another pedal and maybe a show and tell? We see the show and tell, which gets a daze out of Ben Friedman's hand. Okay. That is a uh, force of will to fight it back. Force of will means that this is going to resolve. This show and tell is going to resolve. Things going quickly there. A bit of shortcutting, uh, casting spells during the shuffling. And yeah, show and tell does end up resolving. Days countered by Force of Will. Gristlebrand is, is going to hit play. Now, if we see Gristlebrand in play, that's going to mean he's going to be able to draw seven cards immediately to help protect his uh, Gristlebrand from the Swords to Plowshares that is in Ben Friedman's hand. So, Delver of Secrets or Grim Lava Mancer, the choices that Ben Friedman has, and he chooses Delver of Secrets. And he's going to get another one of the double-faced cards. That one also altered with Clark Kent. 
Crystal Brand. Now, Chris Van Meter can draw at any time. If it was me, I would draw right now just because uh, I wouldn't want to have. All right, Ben I mean, Friedman. Eight cards. Here we go, Ben. Pumping the fist, hoping to flip into Superman. He's going <laughs> to. Oh, look at that. Mr. Miyagi hands. Who's injured the then? <laughs> He's injured. He's going to get his face smashed in by Gristlebrand in just a moment. Oh. Did he peek? Did he see it? Show us. No. He he peeked and it was not. He uh, doesn't want to show us. He will draw it and then they'll show us. During the upkeep, Chris Van Meter draws those seven cards. That works actually better than my play. He doesn't have to discard anything and Ben Friedman doesn't have any mana to do anything with. This drops Ben Fried or Chris Van Meter down to nine life. Ben Friedman at 20. Here comes the source to plowshares. Look at all those force of will in hand. Yeah. And again, this reminds me of tricks. You put down part of the quote-unquote combo, draw a full hand up, and that includes force of wills. I mean, that's the gristle. And Ben player. Friedman knows no, no, that no, no, that's no, no, it. No. Show me the Superman. Uh, uh, <laughs> you'll have to wait until next game, Ricky. Okay. Oh, boy. So now we have our first game of this semifinals finished. But that doesn't mean we've, we've got just this winner for Chris Van Meter on this game. We've got more winners to talk about. That's hey. the SCG Premium giveaway. We do this in every single top eight. Yep. How does it work? What happens? Ricky Hayashi, what is the SCG Premium Trivia giveaway? Okay, so first you have to get on Twitter. Get a Twitter account. Then you have to tweet at the hashtag SCG Premium. What do you have to tweet? You have to tweet the answer to our trivia question that we are going to give in just a moment. It is not about speed. It is about accuracy. So make sure you have the correct answer. We will choose a random winner from all of the correct answers. So hashtag SCG Premium. Do you have a trivia? I do indeed. Okay, now we, uh, we, we have what is considered a true combo deck in this top four. Yeah. And that's Sneak and Show. We saw a million Sneak and Shows earlier, uh, earlier this weekend in we the did? Invitational. There were a ton more. But what other true combo deck do we have in this legacy top eight where there's two copies of it mm -hmm. there are two copies of this true combo deck in our legacy open top eight put the hashtag scg premium okay. in your answer and uh, one lucky person amongst those who get the correct answer will be selected to win six free months of star city games premium and importantly after this round in the finals, we'll do it all again. A new trivia question, but a full year. But I think we've got one more winner this round. Is it you? It's me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the last time we did this, That's I good. believe I opened up a Blood Baron. Well, tell, tell us what this is. This is the Gold Rush Mythic Madness. Okay. That's right. So do you know how this works? I know how this works. Do you know how this works? You might not know. What happens at these events, we have a huge stack in the StarCityGames.com warehouses full of just mythics, and we've got some, I don't know, some house elves or something in there, and it's their job to put one mythic in every little envelope like this, seven copies of every mythic, and then what we do, we give them away basically as door prizes here at the open series in the Invitational. And there were a few left over, so we get to open some on camera. Wish let's me luck. Um, what do I want to get? No, just let's go. No, no, no. What do I want to get? I want to see. I, I know care. you do. What do I want to get? You're, you're gonna get Archangel's Light now. Right? I hope I get a Jace. Archangel's Light. Oh, it's, look, it's slow rolling me. Okay. You're slow rolling us. Okay, here we go. Ready? Oh, oh that's not so bad. That's not so bad. That's Skithrix. Skithrix the Blight Dragon. Spell flying. it. Uh, S-K-I-T-H-R-Y-X. No. All right, so let's look at the sideboards ah, so for close. these players, Adrian. <laughs> go back here to the match. Chris Van Meter, Ben Friedman. Well, Sideboarding, they're looking at each other's deck list, trying to figure this out. What does Ben have? Uh, he's got two meddling mages, one source of plowshares, two grim lava mancers, one sword of feast and famine. There, that's the first card that seems like it might come into this matchup. Uh, three rest in pieces, three fluster storms, also decent. Extra copy of force of will, extra spell pierce, and a wear tear. Wear tear. No, not going to get it done because. You can destroy a sneak attack, but usually they will have the mana probably to just use it. 
Yeah, this list actually looks um, the main deck exactly like what was played by Eric Smith at the last Invitational. The sideboard a little different. I like his meddling mages. I like his sort of feast and famine. I like his force of will and fluster storms and spell pierce. I even like his wear tear. Chris Van Meter, two swan song, two pyroclasm, three blood moon, two red elemental blast, three through the breach, two graft diggers cave, and an echoing truth. We actually saw. Um, this matchup play out before. We know Pyroclasm is good. Yeah. We know that Blood Moon is good. We know that Red Elemental Blast is okay. It's not bad against Force of Will and Delver and the casting of a Geist of St. Traft. You can hit that Geist while it's a spell. Yeah, sure. But you can also Pyroclasm the Geist, and really, it's really that Blood Moon that's the such Blood a Moon killer. Blood Moon is so good. Ba ben Friedman, the uh, three-color Delver decks have zero basic lands they're they're very greedy on their mana base they have fetch lands they have dual lands and they have wastelands and if a blood moon hits the board well pretty much they're all mountains. Na, 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 na. hey 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 goodbye well i thought you were gonna <laughs> sing a song about <laughs> mountains somehow some kind of mountain no. man song i don't know any of those unfortunately <laughs> um it's possible that there are people that do but if you do know a mountain man song related to magic Send us a link to the YouTube video. That'd be great. Chris Van Meter on the left, sneak and show, looking a little mountain man-like. Ben Friedman on the right there, looking perhaps the exact opposite of mountain man-like. He looks like uh, he's ready to play this game. So does Chris. They're ready to come out swinging. Oh, ben Friedman ben down Friedman, a game. Ben Friedman, Adrian. Ben Friedman, we think of as a veteran. He's been here before in the top eight of the Invitational. He's, uh, he's, I think he's won several Opens. He's only 20 years old. That's a young Can man. Can you believe that? He, I, he wrote that on his top eight profile. Age, 20. I was like, stop trolling me, Ben. That's not your real age. He's like, yeah, I am. I remember the when, uh, <laughs> when I started playing Magic. I wonder if he had been born. You <laughs> Did you have to uh, walk up? Uphill both ways to the tournament site through the snow. Well, yada yada yada. Is this, <laughs> is this that kind of story? Back in my day, we didn't even have a banned and restricted list. That is actually <laughs> true. Back in my day, there wasn't even a four of per deck restricted. <laughs> I list, remember so that day it was too. Like all all plague rats and black lotuses, you could build a deck if you could find enough yep. black lotuses. My uh. My first tournaments were pretty bad. Here oh. we go. Chris Van Meter looks at his hand. Ben Friedman looks at his. Ben has got the choice first. Looks like he's keeping. Chris says he'll keep as well. How interesting. Plague Rat now hearkening back to, I mean, Pack Rat hearkening back to Plague Rat. Whoa, oh, he, he did bring in. Hey, hey, oh, look at that. Wear tear. Wait, what is. What just happened there? Ben Friedman did a uh, misclick, but in real life when you misclick, it means you show your opponent a card by accident. Uh, okay, so he was trying to play Delver Secrets, threw a card out of his hand. Uh, maybe he had his hand face down or something, thought he remembered the order, and it was Wear Tear, not Delver Secrets. So giving away information, giving away interesting information, Wear yeah. Tear. Now, uh, both of these players have access to each other's full deck lists, so it's not a complete yes. shock. Oh, look at this. Superman. Fluster. And oh, we see Superman. There we go. Love it. Daze stops the da, ponder da, 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 from Chris da, da, da. Van Meter, and then we have a natural flip. Getting the Ponder, which Ben Friedman then casts, Chris Van Meter is going to be taking three from Superman here, the Insectile Aberration. I, I'm still trying to figure out the wear tear, Adrian. Why did Ben Friedman feel that that was worth bringing into this matchup? I mean, Sneak Attack is an enchantment. Yep. Uh, Lotus Petal is an artifact, I guess, but is it worth having a card like that for those? Well, one of the things it's really for is for Blood Moon. Blood Moon ah. is just such a problem for Ben Friedman that that's a really good card. And then the other thing to think about, too, is that with Days and with Spell Pierce, Chris Van Meter could resolve a sneak attack but be tapped out. And then Ben Friedman could use that opportunity to get rid of it. Now we see a Getaxian Probe. What do you got over there? Emrakul, Brainstorm, Brainstorm, Sneak Attack, Land, Land. The problem I see with Wear and Tear as an answer to Blood Moon is that you would need to hold up that white all the time, you know, as a preemptive counterspell, because once the blood moon hits, everything is a mountain, so you're not going to have access to the white mana portion of it to destroy target enchantment. Well, you know, the thing about it is, since it's only one mana, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Yeah. Lotus Petal, the draw for Chris Van Meter. See the Misty Rainforest. 
We're going to see maybe a main phase brainstorm. Brainstorm. This is the best kind. He's got the shuffle effect right there. He can get rid of two of these cards, make himself a build your own brain ancestral recall. Bra Whoa, brain ancestral recall has been called. Just mashing all the words up. Do you like mashups in music? <laughs> Only if they're good. Okay. Uh, we got a l so no <laughs> is the answer. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> Misty rainforest there. And I was slightly Shuffle. wrong about uh, Ben Friedman's list. Ben Friedman, Friedman's list is not the same as Eric Smith's. Eric Smith's ran four stifles. Ben Friedman, much like Owen Turtnerald, is running zero. Chris Van Meter has access to this list. He knows that. He wants to do something right away here and have that mana open. So Chris Van Meter fetching up two basic islands because he has brought in blood moons, what needs to have blue mana. Yep, there's the right away play of Ponder. I think Six I see, yep, three. there's one of the soul lands, as uh, it was being called by Joey Pasco. Ancient Tomb is that soul land. Tap, add two mana. Deal yourself two damage. And there's a volcanic island as well. All I see are mountains, Adrian. All these non-basic yeah, lands. That's how I feel, they generally look like speaking. mountains to me. <laughs> that's generally how I feel. All I ever see is mountains. Pass the turn. Taxi and probe right back at you. What's the We're new information? Look. It is Ancient Tomb, Scalding Tarn, Lotus Petal. Sneak Attack has been found. Brainstorm, Emrakul. So the pieces of the puzzle are there. You have the Ancient Tomb. Uh, yeah, so he you can power that out. But only access to one red mana next turn if he does that because he would need to use the lotus petal in conjunction with the ancient tomb. This is a good example of where um, the knowledge of the wear tear in Ben Friedman's hand can affect Chris Van Meter's play. He certainly won't just try to s push out the sneak attack and then and activate yeah. it the next turn. Yeah, that, that might have been a Big misplay by Ben to flip the wear tear out of his hand. I mean, I kind of feel when you have a physical mistake like that, that that's not a misplay exactly. It's just kind of, um, you know, it's it's a misclick. It's a stumble. It's you didn't actually when you drop a card. It's not. I don't know if it's a misplay. It's bad. It's not good. <laughs> when you play, when you play Magic, I mean, you have to play the mental portions tight. But it turns out in real life Magic, you have to play the physical portions tight. This is very important, Adrian. It's something that I, I've been on a bit of a crusade lately, I'm going to take this, this time to get on my soapbox, is physical fitness in Magic <laughs> is very important. I wrote an article a few weeks ago about my, my journey with weight loss and getting fit uh, up to the point where I was able to run a marathon, and many people responded that they were in a similar situation where they were eating unhealthy, they were overweight, and they were, they were uh, unable to finish tournaments well because their fitness was not great. We see uh, Chris Van Meter here keeping his hand fit with a brainstorm. Okay, Puts so two cards match, back. Had Reed Duke, right, winning the first game against Robert Cucanado. Robert Cucanado playing Reanimator, Reed Duke playing Bant. We saw him defeat Christopher Anderson in the quarterfinals. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Ricky Hayashi. When we've got Chris Van Meter here up one game to zero versus Ben Friedman in the other bracket. Similarly, we've got Reed Duke up one game to zero over Robert Cucanato. This matchup, Sneak and Show versus Blue White Red Delver. The other matchup, Bant versus Reanimator. And uh, Chris Van Meter here, he's been sculpting his hand for several turns. If you look at his graveyard there at the top left of the screen, you can see Ponder, Brainstorm, Ponder, Brainstorm. That first Ponder was countered by a daze, and uh, his life has been chipped away at by Superman over there, the insectile aberration. But Chris Van Meter has both parts of a combo. He's got the big mat nasty creature, and he's got the way to cheat it into play. Now he just has to see if he can get it through whatever Ben Friedman might have in his hand. We Not do know Ben Friedman has a wear tear, but what else? Not enough mana, Chris Van Meter. So he got two basic islands early on because he has now brought in Blood Moon, but that may have cost him here if he'd gotten a volcanic island with one of those fetch lands. He may have been able to go off this turn by playing the Lotus Petal and the Ancient Tomb. 
And we see uh, Gitaxian Pro. Ben Friedman says, sure, give it a look. Mm, but not w would not have been able to fight it through this. A Flusterstorm, Force of Will. There's that wear and tear. Stoneforge Mystic. And a Lightning Bolt. No white mana. Yeah, no white mana for the tear portion of this flip card. But two counter spells. And the Lotus Petal drawn by Chris Van Meter. That makes it two Lotus Petals now. Lightning Bullshit. Bolts. Chris Van Meter drops to nine. Now, we had talked about this earlier in the weekend. Uh, Lightning Bolt, whether you keep it in or not. And one of the things, it's not a very powerful spell, but it does mean that sometimes the clock is one turn shorter. Now Chris Van Meter at six life, two swings from death. He's got to do something quickly. And if Ben Friedman has another Bolt, he could be dead next turn. Yeah, what the Bolt does is shaves a turn off the clock with that. Insectile Aberration, which now maybe Chris Van Meter is not going to be able to shave his beard off if he can't win this match. And we've got Brainstorm, Brainstorm, Emrakul. Not what he needs. He already has an Emrakul. More Brainstorms, not the, not the greatest. Shuffle. Chris Van Meter thinking it over here. He knows that his opponent has a Flusterstorm and, and a Force of Will. Would you shuffle? I would shuffle. I, I would shuffle, actually. Yeah. Emrakul is just, you don't want that. Brainstorms. No more fetch lands in hand, right? Right now, if I was Chris Van Meter, what I'd be hoping for is um, some way to help push through the spell that I have. Yeah. Something. I mean, he has to hope that Ben Friedman hasn't drawn a blue spell, because that would mean he would have access to both Force of Will mm. and Flusterstorm right now. So you want to look for something like a spell pierce? Or just more copies of Sneak Attack or Show and Tell, right? So then you can jam the first one, let it get countered, and continue to keep running them out there. Yeah. Let's All see right. what happens. Ben Friedman shuffling CVM's deck. There you go. Blind draw off the Ponder. It is Blood, Blood Moon. Moon. That's a good one. That's good, too, because that's going to draw um, a counter spell as well. It actually um, is incredibly good. The thing about that card right now is it's going to lock, if it resolves, it'll lock Ben Friedman out of any possibility of white mana. Yeah, so it's going to blank that wear and tear. Let's look again, he says. What do you have in that hand? And the important thing here, yeah. He uh, drew uh, a blue spell. Which is very important because the Flusterstorm itself cannot counter Blood Moon. Flusterstorm only counters instants and sorceries, so the Blood Moon could have only been countered by the Force of Will. Wow, Chris Van Meter has drawn a Force of Will. Does he have a blue spell in hand? I don't no, think so. he doesn't. Okay, so he's going to need to set it up. He would love to draw another blue card to pitch to Force of Will, but I think he's going to wait here or... One of the things he has as a line, he can lay this Blood Moon right now, and it would force Ben Friedman to cast it a Force of Will to counter it. But if Chris Van Meter does that, he drops to four life. The attack yeah, the drops him to tomb. one life, and then that means he can't tap his Ancient Tomb for the rest of the game. Yeah. So you're saying, yeah, he's not played a land this turn, so play the Ancient Tomb, tap well, that. Oh, no, I'm not saying that that's what he should do. I'm saying that that's what well, would I'm happen. Well, if... If he wants to do that with the Blood Moon, he also has a Lotus Petal. He brings forward two Lotus Petals, so he could go with two Lotus Petals. And that, but then he's still locked in with Ancient Tomb well, next he, turn. Yeah, he's not locked down completely, but it just means that he can't use the Ancient Tomb ever again. He goes down to four life. Here's the basically the test spell. I'm going to turn off your Fluster Storms, Ben. Did you want me to turn off your Fluster Storms? Oh, spell the Pierce. It was not a Fluster Storm. I thought he had drawn a spell, um, a Fluster Storm, so he had two Fluster Storms and a Force Will. No, it was a Spell Pierce. The, the best possible draw there, you said, if he draws another blue card, he drew the best possible blue card. A singleton answer, I mean a, a one card answer to the Blood Moon Look right at that there. smile. Ben Friedman feels this one's locked up. Well, Let's see if he's right. Yeah, I mean, I with the hand that well. Chris Van Meter has, he cannot win this game, and he yeah. knows it. So close right there. 
just that that match could have turned on maybe a blue card in Chris Van Meter's hand making that force of will live or Ben Friedman not drawing a spell pierce and being forced to use force of will so we're gonna go to a game three yeah very exciting uh, on the other side the last we heard Reed Duke was up one game to zero over Robert Cucanato. Reed Duke playing Bant, Robert Cucanato playing Reanimator. One of those gentlemen moving on to the finals, gonna play one of these gentlemen. And now here we go, Chris Van Meter is rejiggering his sideboard, it looks like. He might be thinking about changing some, some things yeah. up. Is it, what is it, the wear tear he saw, maybe, is? That's a possibility, certainly. Made him change his mind yeah. about Blood Moon. You can see some banter here between uh, Glenn Jones and the other players here at the table, as well as the judge. Now, if you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Ricky Hayashi. This is the StarCityGames.com Open Series. It was featuring the Invitational all this weekend, but you know what? That Invitational is in the books. Brad Nelson, our champion there, he was playing the exact same archetype we see in the hands of Chris Van Meter. It perhaps is no surprise because these two guys play against each other quite a bit. Okay, well, we've got a report now. Reed Duke has locked it up. He has won two games to zero over Robert Cucanato. He moves on with Bant. He is waiting in the wings, the end boss, if you will, now for these gentlemen. And they know it. They're sitting right there next to them. Okay, so who, which of these decks would be better, a better matchup against Bant? Who, who would want to see Reed advance? Well, you mean who who uh, who would Reed want to see advance? Uh, whichever way, whichever way you want to think about it. Well, Reed is playing a Bant list that looks remarkably like the No Bant that we saw from probably about a year and a half or two years ago at Prominence. No, in that case, standing for Natural Order. And uh, you were jokingly calling this Yes Bant because there are no Natural Orders, so No No becomes Yes. With two these, nose makes yeah, yes. with these, uh, with these two opponents, I think Reed would be happier to see the Delver Blade opponent, primarily because even though Reed Duke does have some cards that are decent against a, a combo deck, he's got uh, the access to searching out a Gaddock Teague. Yeah. He's got some Dazes. That's all he really has to fight the combo in game one, which would mean he would be a real underdog game one. He'd have to rely on his sideboard force of wills to put up the same kind of fight. Yeah. I think he wants Ben Friedman to win. Okay. Well, the Yes Bant deck, Adrian Sullivan, you missed it, but someone caught it on Twitter. A fellow fan of wrestling caught that the Yes, Yes, Yes chant is a reference to Daniel Bryant, one of my favorite wrestlers right now. It's funny because I don't have a TV at home, so I don't usually watch television shows, but I travel to so many events on Monday and Friday, flying out. Yes. You know, on Friday, flying home on Monday. I actually get to watch a lot of Monday Night Raw on the planes. That's funny. You can see Reed Duke in the background there packing up, getting ready for his next match, getting mm -hmm. a little bit of relaxation in. And uh, these two players now, Chris Van Meter is going to be on the play here in this game three, the last game of this semifinal for the StarCityGames.com Open Series, the legacy portion. So you said Reed Duke would rather face Ben Friedman. I think he would. I mean, uh, he has weapons against Chris Van Meter, but not nearly as many as yeah. he had as against uh, Ben Friedman. But he's made it this far. He's made it all the way through nine rounds of Swiss of this legacy Open. And you have to believe that Reed ha went through some kind of combo deck, maybe a sneak and show deck in oh, that sure. Swiss. All of these players have faced probably a, a very wide variety of opponents, but regardless, when it comes down to it, Reed Duke is one of the best players in the world. He's here in this room. These are two amazingly good players who've had a lot of success on the Star City Games Open Series, and I'm sure neither of them is happy to find out that their opponent is gonna be Reed Duke, who's gonna be the end boss, as you said earlier. Okay, so Chris Van Meter starting off with a Ponder. We've got to pause in the action. And there you go. Ponder, three. Looks at three cards. Going to shuffle. Did not like what he see. He almost immediately threw those back into the ocean. Catch and release for Chris Van Meter. <laughs> looking. What is he looking for? He's looking for a sneak attack and or show and tell. And then on the other side, Gristle Brand and or Emrakul. 
That is the combo deck sneak and show. There was one point where the deck was called Attack of the Show. I don't remember that. Oh, I think <laughs> that might have been a Glenn Jones naming, and it got the kibosh, but a reference to a TV show. Okay. Well, Ponder has finished resolving, and now we pass the turn to Ben Friedman, who starts off with a probe. So let's look. See there the Ponder, Brainstorm, Force of Will, Lotus Petal, Emrakul, Gristlebrand. Okay, it's so a really solid hand, though it is, as you can tell, very mana light. Missing a yeah, missing a land here, so. Chris Van Meter is going to be forced, almost certainly forced to ponder on his next turn once again. And Ben Friedman, if he has something like a Fluster Storm or Spell Pierce, may just choose to counter that here. Oh, and he's going to Wasteland. That's even, that's even more devastating. Now Chris Van Meter has to find a land. He may have to use a Lotus Petal up here to try to ponder into something. Yeah, he's, he thinks about it. Does he really want to do that? Does I mean, it might be a question of no good options. Yeah. He can't afford to wait for a land, so he casts Lotus Petal, cracks it for a mana, blue mana, ponder, and now Ben Friedman. Would he like to force of will this? Does he have a force of will in hand? I mean, it's actually worth thinking about, but it's not an exciting force of will. It's I mean, the exciting, thing is, there are not very many lands in um, Chris Van Meter's deck. Only 19 lands. That means there's 18 lands left in this deck. This it's, it's not unreasonable to think about. This could be Ben Friedman's ticket to the finals to face off against the end boss, Reed Duke, the M. Bison of this tournament. This Ben... Are you going to do it? Are you going to force of will a ponder? That could be unheard of, but you do what you got to do, Chris Van Meter. His volcanic island was wastelanded, and we saw off the Jataxian probe that he has no other lands. He had no other lands, and using the Lotus Petal to ponder is an indication that he did not draw land, and there you go, force of will. There Goes we for go. It. Look at that. That is a... Uh Wow. It's a, it's a big guy. Chris Van Meter thinking about forcing back. And that wouldn't be unreasonable either. Yeah, there you go. And he does do it. Oh, he wow. decides much more quicker. He feels like he has to have this ponder. Force of will pitching the brainstorm as well is very important. If you look wow. at that, I can see a sword of feast and famine, a delver, a lightning bolt, and a land in Ben Friedman's hand. The question is, do we see a land in the top three cards of Chris Van Meter's library? And you need more than one land. Remember, Chris Van Meter has no land. Yeah, oh, but so it's, it's a several it's lands. It's a fetch land. It's a Misty Rainforest. He's got several lands. Oh, he's going to Scalding Tarn, down. Ancient Tomb, and Misty Rainforest. So he he's going to leave them all on top. Yeah, he's just going to. He's not going to sacrifice this fetch land and just draw all three lands because, as you said, he needs all three to cast his spells. Here Delver we go. Secrets. Delver of Secrets is Clark Kent, apparently, according to Ben Friedman. Here we go. We're going to see I a love that analogy. ancient tomb. Okay, so he may think about going for it here with his second lotus petal on the ancient tomb. No, just past his turn, so he wants the misty rainforest as well. Delver of Secrets oh, does not flip. Wow, that is an uh, incredible draw there. Ben Friedman draws a wasteland. We see the hand, Emrakul, Gristlebrand, Lotus Petal, and we know what's on top. On top is yet one more land. It's a misty rainforest oh, on top. I, I, yeah, I completely forgot. We had seen Chris Van Meter's hand, and he does not even have a sneak attack yet. So Wasteland in for one with the Delver. At a pass. Chris Van Meter is going to draw a land here. There it is. Puts it on the table. Says go. Ben Friedman untaps, looks at the top. Is it going to be a natural flip? No. Nope. Second land, in for one. Not a clock here at all. Chris Van Meter has lots of time. Pass back. Lots of time, but he needs so much more. Another <laughs> land. That's a. He's getting there. 
If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Ricky Hayashi. This is SCG Live. Follow us at SCG Live. Join in the conversation, hashtag SCG Envy. And, uh, you know, in response to something that was said earlier, it's true that we uh, talked about Reed Duke perhaps wanting to play against Chris Van Meter, that um, Reed Duke does have Caracas, but he's only got those Knight of the Reliquaries to search out that Caracas, so it's it's not a lot of weapons. I'm still pretty sure he'd prefer to play against Ben Friedman. Ben Friedman here has a very small clock. It's just one power, but he has in his hand a sort of feast and famine. He has a Geist of St. Trapped in hand. Will he be able to add to this clock? And Chris Van Meter's hand is currently Lotus Petal Emrakul Gristlebrand. We know that from his Taxing Probe, and he has drawn a continuous stream of lands after being stuck at no lands at one point and forced to use a Lotus Petal to cast a Ponder. And here we go. Chris Van Meter draws, and... Remember, a sneak attack is one half of the equation here. Yeah. Ben oh, Friedman completely it. untapped, which means that he could be walking into a bunch of counter magic. Does he want to risk it? In order to risk it, he's going to have to take two lands out of his deck, sacrifice his Lotus Petal. He says Lotus Petal. He says Sack I, I, Sack. He's going to do some shortcutting to get him down there. I think Chris Van Meter just had his YOLO moment there. Decides to go for it. If you have any kind of counter spell for the sneak attack, this is going to be a rough position. Oh, but no, you didn't, Ricky. <laughs> and we see those basic lands there. Basic island, basic island, and mountain. And will he, uh, will he go all in? You know, it's funny. I used to live goes. in Yolo County in California, so I feel like I'm allowed to say that. Sneak attack hits, and uh, he puts nope. it right in his graveyard. Ben What's he's like, no, no, it's not happening. I got happening. something. Let's do this. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. A hard cast daze. That's got oh, That's painful. That's such, yeah, the, the worst way to, for that sneak oh, attack to go down. Oh, and this is going to be really, really important here. A third land means he can drop either a Geist or a Sword, both of which are very powerful right now. Yeah, yeah I almost prefer the Sword in this situation. Sword? There it is. Feast and Famine going to looking to feast on CVM's hand and really Needs a Pyroclasm this. or something. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh. Show and tell off Ben the Friedman has a Force of Will, though. Force of Will and a Geist of St. Traft. So is, is Geist the last blue card in his there hand? There we go. It was a nice rip, but what do we have here? It's going to be... Well, I bet you we're going to see a revelation. I think we're going to see something. Is there a secret to be shown? Apparently not. Equip. In for three. Yeah, Trigger. Think. There's a discard and an untap. No, you don't untap your Delver. Uh, the Delver stays <laughs> tapped, but not... It is not a land. <laughs> yeah, the Delver stays tapped. Doesn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. doesn't matter at this point. There we go. Chris Van Meter down to a single Gristlebrand. Um, thinking about what Chris Van Meter has in his deck right now, I, I think... Given the way he's locked down right now, another show. And he's tell gonna have to. Top. He's gonna have to uh, draw a show and tell off of the top, or draw a land and then start runner runner without having anything happen. So really, it's just show and tell off the top because there's a lightning bolt yeah. in Ben Friedman's I hand, so there's no time to do anything else. I it's think these players know that. Right here, They're show and tell or no. That shuffle was the shuffle of I'm gonna shuffle something terrible. Here it to is. Top this is the library. last relevant turn. Oh, oh, it's so close. Attack. So well, close. To be so fair, far. not the last relevant turn. Chris Van Meter can draw the um, show until next turn as well. Yeah. Oh, Daze is drawn. <laughs> that actually is the lockout then. Daze again. Daze happened last time on the oh, show until off boy. the top. Oh, oh my oh God. My goodness. Backwards. Oh, the other oh. side. Of that would have been pretty good game. Oh, wow. Twice. Yeah, and then Ben does point out there that because of the protection from black from the Sword of Feast and Famine and the Lightning Bolt, it wouldn't have mattered. He could lay the...